Welcome to the Money Smart for Adults, Module 10, Building Your Financial Future. We're going to go through this instructor guide and highlight how you can facilitate this training. As in all other modules, we start out here with a contents page, giving you all the information relating to this module listed by section and page number so that you know exactly where to find things here. And as you can see, there are actually four sections to this particular module. Background information for instructors, as with other modules, is exactly the same. It starts out with a reference to the tools that you'll be using to deliver the training, including the guide to presenting Money Smart for Adults. The training preparation checklist is to make sure that you have everything that's going to equip you to have a successful training. In terms of materials you're going to need, as in other modules, this is a checklist of all that you're going to need to deliver the training, including the instructor guide, participant guide, PowerPoint slides. Now regarding the participant guide, if it's a challenge for you to give copies to everyone in your training, please refer them to the online version or some other solutions that may be appropriate. Optional materials such as the parking lot for questions and supplies for any optional introductory activity that you may be doing should be on hand. Understanding the icon section is the same for all the other modules in the Money Smart for Adults training. You can reference them here as a refresher if you need to. The module purpose is to help participants to create plans to build assets for a solid financial future. Now, as we look at the module at a glance table, it lists the sections, the key takeaway, the purpose objectives, and the time estimates all laid out here for you. Please refer to the Guide to Presenting Money Smart for Adults, which includes additional information on selecting sections for specific audiences so that you can further customize your training. Module opening. There are prompts such as say, ask, do, show slide. Those are instructions throughout the module to give you navigation points on what to do in that particular section at that time. Now showing slide one, which is the title slide of the module, as in Every module of the Money Smart for Adults training, you are going to complete a few tasks such as welcoming participants as they arrive, introduce yourself, ask them to sign in, and ensure any requested reasonable accommodations are in place and make any necessary adjustments. And when you're ready to begin the training, ask participants to complete the pre-training survey and you're also going to show slide two, which gives them a visual of that. The parking lot and participant guide, you want to establish a flip chart poster for a parking lot and inform your participants that it's for questions, concerns, ideas, and resources that you will address during breaks or at the end of training. Mention that the participant guide is theirs to use during and after this session and encourage them to take notes and to write in them. If time permits, start your training with an optional introductory activity. I highly recommend that you do this as it's a great way to get participants energized and ready to learn. Now you'll find suggestions for fun activities in the Guide to Presenting Money Smart for Adults or you can use your own. Section 1, Assets and Asset Building. The objectives is that participants will be able to explain what assets are, why they're beneficial, and how they can help build the financial future and develop a plan to build assets. Let's pause for a moment to point out some helpful navigation features of the instructor guide. There is helpful information in the headers and footer that will help you stay oriented. In the header, the right hand side reminds you that you're looking at the instructor guide. This is helpful if you happen to also consult a copy of the participant guide during your training. The left hand side of the header identifies the section you are in. The footer of the document identifies the module along with the page number. 
you're going to introduce the section and key takeaway on slides three and then on slide four. Starting with slide three, you're going to discuss what assets are, why assets are beneficial, and how assets can help them build a financial future and how they can develop a plan to build assets. Slide four is going to get into the key takeaway, which is assets can lead to wealth and financial security. What is an asset? You're going to be showing slide five, and you're going to use the prompt, which is to give you some scripting on what to say to define the three types of assets, physical, financial, and productive. And you'll see all of that content here on page 12 and 13 here in the instructor guide. Slide six shows the try it activity. Now this is the first activity in this entire module and it is titled, Is it an asset? Your participants are going to look at the list. They're gonna think about what it is and answer the question, yes, no, or it depends based on what they think. Give them about three minutes to go through the entire list and then after that, review their answers by going through the first one by asking, is a new computer an asset? Then from there, you're gonna talk about each of the rows and ask for answers. Now, if someone gives you an incorrect answer that's different from what's shown, facilitate a short discussion on why they chose that answer and offer some guidance based on the answer key. And so that is here for your reference to help you to have that discussion. The next activity is the apply it, my assets. This is on slide number seven, and you're gonna have them to look at these things and to think about, again, putting them in the frame of mind about the assets that they have. So they're going to be looking at categories for physical, financial, and productive assets and give them some time to go through and answer the questions related to each of those asset types. And if needed, refresh their memories by asking them to name an example of a physical asset, a financial asset, and a productive asset. So this is gonna really help really anchor the learning because as we go through this particular module, it's gonna be very important that your participants understand these distinctions. Slide eight gets into benefits of asset building. And now we're gonna be looking at strategies that increase the financial, physical, and productive assets that they may own. Continuing on with that, slide nine goes into owning assets. And again, you have prompts there to help you to facilitate the discussion. So follow the content that's listed there. And that's going to segue into the apply it activity developing my plan to build more assets. And this is really about answering a series of five questions to help participants to develop a plan. And so they're going to look at the worksheet and give them the opportunity to answer those questions. And the answers obviously are gonna be different for everyone that's going to be working on the worksheet. And that's okay. What we wanna do is to help people to understand how to think about the, the different assets, the financial, physical, and productive, and what would help them to meet the goals that they have for their future. And so you also want to follow the prompts that says to ask, would anyone like to share their plan to build more assets? So you're really helping them to think through this, again, from the context of these three different asset types. Here are some questions here regarding the developing my plan to build more assets. And then you're gonna wrap up the section by helping them to remember the key takeaway for this particular section. And assets can lead to wealth and financial security. Section two, how assets create a financial foundation. During this particular section, you're gonna help participants to be able to define net worth and explain how it relates to financial security and the ability to meet financial goals, calculate net worth, and to identify strategies for changing net worth. Introduction to section and key takeaway is done on slide 12 and slide 13. 
Slide 12 obviously being the introductory slide to the section that you're introducing to your participants. Slide 13 is the actual key takeaway. Net worth is a good measure of your financial stability. Calculate your net worth by subtracting your liabilities, money you owe others, from your assets. Assets, liabilities, and equity. You're going to now define what each of these are using slides 14 and going through the prompts as listed here in the instructor guide. So now we're going to get into our try it activity, calculating liability and equity. You're going to use this scenario of Ezra's car purchase to determine his liability and equity based on his down payment and the cost of the car. So you're going to read this through and go ahead and begin to use the prompts here as listed. You're going to ask your participants about what Ezra's liability is and what his equity is in the car. Now I want to say this, that we use this example to show how to calculate equity, not to comment on the value of cars. So please make a note of that. You may have people ask you questions like that, but we want to make sure that the emphasis here is on calculating equity. Now we move into the topic of net worth on slide 16 and 17. You're going to present information on net worth and the value of net worth, and then you're going to use the prompts as listed here in the instructor guide. That will lead you into our next activity, which is the try it calculating net worth. You're going to sh show slide number 18 and we have another scenario. And this particular scenario is now about Justine calculates her net worth. You're going to use this to figure out Justine's net worth by completing the net worth calculation table. This is what your participants are going to do for this particular activity. And as you see here, there is a table here, and what you want to do is ask people what her net worth is. You're going to show slide number 19. You're going to reveal that the answer is 22,000. Now, if the group came up with a different answer, you're going to work through the calculations as a large group using this answer key. The whole idea here is to get them into the the practice of actually listing out all of the different items of assets and liabilities and then just simply doing the math. So once we finish with Justine's calculation of her net worth, that's going to allow us to move into calculating our own net worth. And that's what you're going to explain to your participants. This is the apply activity. You're going to show slide number 20 and we're going to give them an opportunity to actually go through this. Now, I must say this, if you have the time in your in your training to be able to do this, that's great. Um, it's also very empowering to be able to have this discussion about this. However, when they do this, they're going to need to make sure that their answers are accurate. And so the suggestion is for them to locate their documents, um, so that they can put the right figures down on the worksheet, both for their assets and for their liabilities so that when they get to the calculating my net worth page, then it is fairly accurate based on the information that they have. So again, we're transitioning from Justine's scenario into this particular apply where they're actually doing it with their own numbers. Now, immediately following this, there is the section here discussion on increasing your net worth. You're going to show slide number 21 and now this is about helping participants understand how they can increase their net worth by increasing assets or decreasing their liabilities or actually doing both. And so you're going to have them look at what's listed here on the worksheet. There are, is a question that they can answer. Matter of fact, there's several questions that they can answer in regards to increasing their net worth, give them time to go through that and to answer those questions. Now, you can have a discussion about this as well as the prompt 
the ask prompt here says what are some specific ways people can increase their net worth and you can actually write participants responses on a flip chart or a whiteboard in terms of what else to add slide number 22 gives additional ways that is possible to help people to increase their net worth and again you have prompts there in your instructor guide to give content to the actual bullet points listed on the slide and pages 29 and 30 gives you that content then we're going back to the apply it where we're looking at increasing my net worth and participants are going to continue to answer the questions on their own so that they can really reflect on what they can do to actually make this happen for them to increase their net worth the question how can I increase my net worth it says thinking about increasing assets decreasing liabilities or both and then it says how would these changes affect my financial future and then of course they're going to give that answer and that's how we wrap up this particular section and then of course you're going to give them the key takeaway to remember that net worth is a good measure of your financial stability calculate your net worth by subtracting your liabilities money you owe others from your assets section three cars as assets the objective here is to explain why a car can be a productive asset, list things to consider when choosing whether to buy or lease a car, determine how much they can afford to pay for a car, and list tips for getting a car loan. So you're going to introduce the section on slide 25 and state that you're going to discuss how a car can be a productive asset and look at some key considerations when getting a car. Slide 26 goes into the key takeaway. A car can be a productive asset when it helps you get other assets. Plan ahead to get a car you can afford with as little debt as possible. Then you're going to lead a discussion on how cars can be productive assets. There's a question here that I really think is a great question. How can having a car help you get other assets? And go ahead and have that discussion. Make sure that participants know that on page 21 in their participant guide, they can actually take notes um, based on this discussion. And so you want them to be able to do that because this is a very important topic many people may not have heard of the term productive assets prior to this training and so this is a really good opportunity to really give lots of content on this particular subject so that your participant really understands what productive assets are and especially as it relates to their cars so slide 27 gets into cars can be productive assets and it gives you prompts now the question here which is the same question that's on page 21 in their participant guide. The question says, ask, does owning a car always make you better off financially? Why or why not? Great question there. And you want to have a good discussion about that and get people's responses to that. Get them to tell you um, how they feel about that, share, explain their answers, and of course, um, add additional content if not contributed which you'll see at the bottom of page 34 in the instructor guide it gives you some suggestions that you can add for that and so that leads us into the next try it activity should you buy or lease a car showing slide number 28 which is a snapshot of the actual worksheet that they're looking at in their participant guide and notice the way this is laid out here there are factors buying a car with a loan and then leasing a car this is designed to be a group discussion so what you're going to do starting out with ownership potential you're going to actually begin to state things about that particular factor where there's buying a car or leasing a car and let them really understand what you're saying by explaining it and then having a great discussion you'll see here in the participant guide that it's blank but in the instructor guide you have all of the prompts of content that you can contribute to this discussion so the idea here 
is to lead this discussion, have participants to take notes based on what the discussion is so that they get a thorough understanding on all of these factors and whether or not it's really going to sway them one way or another, either buying a car with a loan or leasing a car. So that also lends itself going into how much car can you afford? That's on slide number 29. And that is really getting into having a discussion that there's no real precise formula for determining how much money you can afford to pay for a car. But there are some guidelines there. And so there is the consumerfinance.gov website that you can mention and have them go there on their own time, go to the search and type in afford car, and that will give them a page that gives more detailed step-by-step -step process about figuring out how much car they can afford. Now, when it comes down to affording a car, it's really about starting with their monthly spending and savings plan. So we want to maybe have some discussions around how much they can realistically afford to pay every month. Now, remember that monthly car payments will not be the only expense. Be sure to include the other costs, insurance, maintenance, repairs, gas, all that. So make sure that you're having this discussion with your participants as you are talking about this topic. Now, then we get into the tips for getting a car loan. That's on slide number 30 and page number 23 in the participant guide. Now, it gives a list of things that they should do, starting out with review credit reports and, of course, going through the process of getting approved for a loan, shopping around, keeping good records, and then not taking the car from the dealership until the loan terms are finalized. That's that's probably fodder for great discussion um, during your, your, your training because there's a lot of dealerships that will encourage people to drive the car off the lot while they're still working out the financing. But I, I really appreciate the suggestion here. And of course, you want to have this discussion with the participants about this very thing. Okay, because what could happen is the loan terms could change or the financing could be less advantageous for them. Um, so you just want to wait until the deal is finalized before they take the car. So this is just something that you want to emphasize as you're having discussions on this particular topic. As we move towards the section closing, showing slide 31, a car can be a productive asset when it helps you get other assets. Plan ahead to get a car you can afford with as little debt as possible. Section four, training and education as assets. For this section, your objective is to help participants to be able to explain why training and education can be productive assets and explain ways of paying for training and education. Slide number 32 is your introductory slide to the section. Slide 33 is the key takeaway. Training and education can be productive assets when they give you a strong chance of securing a better career or a higher paying job. Plan ahead to pay for them with as little debt as possible. Slide 34 through 37 Follow the prompts there because this is information about training and education can be productive assets, types of educational experiences and institutions, pursuing education and training, and slide 37, training or education is not always a smart investment. Now, that slide really is not to deter anyone from seeking education, but it is meant for people to do their research to really think about the cost considering attending, whether it's a training program, it's a record of job placement for graduates and the cost before they agree to attend. So it just means that they should make informed decisions. So moving forward from there, you're gonna go into the apply it, which is my considerations in paying for training or education that is on page 25 in the participant guide. And there 
are a series of questions here. Now, based on this particular activity, it's really about having the participants think about a particular job or career that they may want to pursue going forward, and of course, the training or education required to do that. And so you want to go ahead and have them to think about these answers based on whatever that career or that pursuit is. And when you do that, you want to maybe mention the first question, what is the future earnings, potential job security, and market demand of the career or job I am planning to pursue? And go ahead, give them an opportunity to answer that. And that is, of course, that is the first question on the applied activity. And then you'll see the prompts here for additional information um, and additional content that you can add when you're discussing each of the questions here that is on this page. Now, there is a note here that you may want to consider incorporating portions of module three, your income and expenses, and module four, your spending and saving plan into your training because obviously this is going to help with the discussion around costs and all the other obligations that your participants are gonna have as they pursue this. And so it may be very beneficial to bring portions of those modules into your discussion. Slide 39 gets into ways to pay. And there are different prompts there and different content that you can suggest here based on the bullet points on that slide to give people that information. Slide 40 gets into scholarships and grants. Slide 41, saving money for training or education. And as we go through all the way between slide 41 and 46, these are different types of ways that things can be paid for in terms of their education, student loans, federal student loans, um, FAFSA, free application for federal student aid. Then, of course, it gets into paying back the student loans and contacting your loan servicer. This is great information for participants, especially if they are seriously pursuing getting loans to finance their training and education. And then there is the studentaid.gov website for more information regarding options for repayment. And so we want to make sure that your participants really understand the processes for paying back student loans or any type of financing that they're going to get to pay for their training or education. And then section closing, restating the key takeaway, training and education can be productive assets when they give you a strong chance of securing a better career or higher paying job plan ahead to pay for them with as little debt as possible. And so here we are. That is the overview of this particular module. And as you can see here, we went through the four sections here and also the four key takeaways. I wanna say here that the take action is the same in every module. It's important not to skip it, even if you can only spare a couple of minutes. The participants will remember what you just presented a lot easier if they can write down a few action steps, because you know knowledge is not enough, action is required. Then you can administer the post-training survey. And of course, and you're gonna show slide number 49, which gives them a snapshot of the post-training survey. You also have your answer key for both the pre and post-training surveys so that you can check how the movement was between the pre and the post-training surveys from your participants. And this page here shows where module 10 fits into the overall training curriculum for Money Smart for Adults. And so that will conclude our overview and highlights of Module 10, Building Your Financial Future.